Donald Byrne from County Mayo worked in construction until the downturn, when he made the move into event management. After working in London, Donald has returned with an idea which he thinks could be a real breakthrough for his industry. Hello Dragons, my name is Donald Byrne. I'm an events manager from County Mayo. My company is Big Red Barn. Big Red Barn is the newest mobile event structure on the market. All of what has come about comes from my experience in the Lind London Olympics and throughout the event industry in Ireland. I have encountered numerous major problems with marquee, tent or such structure. One of the biggest is not being able to get approval for an occasional license. Other major problems are weather. Wind makes these structures very unstable, ripping and damaging canvas and also moving. Rain enters small sides due to no gutters and through rips and tears in the canvas. Big Red Barn solves all these problems and more. The roof sheeting is covered with a fleece membrane which stops condensation, dripping and is excellent for acoustics. Straight away, I got my idea professionally drawn up, signed off by a structural engineer, applied for my trademark and patent, so my idea could not be copied. It is manufactured locally and is 100% Irish. I am here today to give you the exciting opportunity to invest 80,000 euros for 20% stake in my company. This money would be spent on a second barn, a franchise package, a marketing and advertisement package. Event management is a very lucrative industry, and lucrative is one of the Dragon's favorite words. But they'll be looking for a lot more detail before they commit to an investment. New Dragon Eamon Quinn gets the grilling underway. Hi Donald, I'm Eamon. Hi Eamon. Uh, I don't understand um, why you, you said that marquees aren't allowed to be used in certain circumstances. You might just flesh that out a little bit for no us. No problem. Um, I started off as a builder and I was running uh, fundraisers for the local hospice. And we were running a barn dance in a real barn. And the first year we managed 10,000 euros we raised. Second year we raised 40,000 euros. So I realised, you know, people were into this. I said I'd get a marquee because my barn wasn't any bigger and adjoin it to the barn to allow me to have more people. So each time I had to go to the court to get my occasional bear license and my dance license. So when I went to the court with the marquee, I was refused. I didn't know that you weren't allowed an occasional license beneath the canvas structure. Sorry, you're in the event business. You know what happens. You get the occasional license from a local pub, pub who run the bar in it for you. That's correct, Gavin. Yeah. So every time I move somewhere, I have to get that publican. The, the licensing law is a big thing, Gavin, because I experienced the problem. I've been to court for every single event we ran this summer. Everybody has to bring their local publican to the court and get the license. And the license shall not be granted if it is within a marquee. Whatever about the fine detail of licensing laws, Ramona Nicholas seems less concerned with the legalities of Donald's barn than its aesthetics. Is there any way you can change yes, the, the look or the whole well, we image? We can adapt the colour to anything you want outside. And yeah. on the inside, uh, we have a guy who tailors weddings. He'll hang white drapes in the ceiling, black drapes with stars in them, put in a floor. I have a stage, uh, I have flooring, seating, outdoor furniture, props. If you are doing a barn dance, that we have carts we can hang for the ceiling, whiskey barrels to add the theme to it. If you're having trouble getting an occasional license or a bear license, we also have that, which we can supply and we take a percentage of the profits. Hi, Donald and Barry. Barry, how are you? Very good. So you. You've had some events already. How much money have you made and how, what are your projections going forward? Okay, this year um, we charged 5,000 an event, which covers three days. Because interest was so keen, we've upped it to 7,000 this year. Now the profit on the five was two and a half. The profit on the seven this year is 4,000 euros. So my projections, I go over for three years, are on rentals and on um, a sale of franchise. So my first year, I've allowed one franchise sale and 20 rentals. Turnover for that was 248,000 with a profit of 18,000. My second year, 20 rentals with three sales in franchise, which was a turnover of 498,000 with a profit of 117,000. Third year, I took in a second barn to do more rentals, which allowed me 40 rentals and five sales, giving me a turnover of 875,000 and a profit of 225,000. So out of 52 weeks, how often? So what I've allowed is, I've allowed June, July, August, September fully booked. I had a Christmas market, so you have the full month of December, then you have Easter one off, 
and Patrick's weekend one-off. Now, okay, that was stopped... Help, help, help me with that. How many weeks is that? That's 52? 20 rentals in total. So 20, 20 by 7,000. 7, Correct. With 4,000 profit for each one. That's 140. So you've, 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 paid, you've, you've paid it twice back. Correct. Making the finances work is hugely important, but recruitment supremo Peter Casey is just as interested in the people driving the company. Hi, Donald. I'm Peter. Peter, <clears throat> how are you keeping? Not too bad. So you've used the we quite a lot. Is it just you, or are there other people involved in this? It's just me that runs the company, but I have a 50% business partner, but he's a silent partner. I put in 25,000 myself, and my business partner put in 25,000. Donald, there's no such thing as a silent partner, really. Um, I'd like to know a little bit about no the other person. I tell you, he's 56 years of age, gentleman. He leaves it to me, the young buck who's jumping up and down on the roof. Right. And just, to... I'm just trying to understand, you both put in the same amount of money, 25,000 each. You do all the work, Correct. and yet he has 50%. Yes. Wow. Extra partners, silent or otherwise, tend to spook the dragons. If they're unsure about an investment, it can be a deciding factor. Yeah, Donald, um, I think you're, you're a fantastic operator. You, you clearly know your business. In the back of my mind, I think the 50-50 the share seems, seems unfair to me because uh, you're doing all the work, you're bringing all the value. Um, I think you should certainly address that. I don't know if you need equity. I, I, think, I think you should look elsewhere. Equity is very expensive to take. Uh, I, th I think you might be better looking towards some bank finance route. Uh, so I'm out. Thank you very much. Well, currently, Donald, it's not, it's not attractive enough for me. Um, purely on that, I'm out. Thank you very much. In the space of a few seconds, Donald has just lost two potential investors. He will now be praying that the floodgates aren't about to open. Uh, you personally are definitely investable. You're a very, very impressive young man. Sorry, when you're in my age, you say condescending things like that to, to people who are younger than you. Sorry, but, but what age are you? I'm 26. Wow. He is a young man. <laughs> Versus me, he's a very young man. Uh, ah, Donald, you're, you're, you really, really are impressive. Um, it's, it's not grabbing my eye, so uh, I'm out. Thank you very much, Gavin. We hope Thank to see you at a big Red Baron event soon. I, I certainly will. I only invest in uh, businesses I get passionate about, and I just... I'm finding it hard to get passionate about a barn, you know. I'm sure I could get passionate in a barn, but I don't get passionate about barns, so for that reason, I'm out. Thank you very much. So Peter Casey bows out. There seems to be a lot of love in the den for Donal, but precious little investment. He is now pinning all his hopes on one man. Donal, uh, I'm really impressed with you as well. I'm. Uh, bit worried about your business sense because of the deal that you negotiated with your partner. Um, you gave him a sweetheart deal. So I'm going to make you an offer, but I'd like to address that equity issue that you've created between you and your partner. So what I'd like to do is offer you 80,000 for 40% of the business and then I'd like to give you 10% of that 40 personally so that the shareholding ends up as you at 40% and both of your partners now at 30% each. Can I think about it for a moment? Yeah. On face value, Barry's unusual offer seems pretty fair. But Donald still appears to be a little unsure. Thank you very much for your offer. I'm not being rude, but I'd like to ask what you feel you could bring to the table and how you could help me promote my product. Okay, well, first thing I think I could bring you is a, more of an experience in business in general and how to negotiate deals like this one you negotiate, negotiate a little bit better. The other thing I'd like you to think about is how would the three-way relationship work between me, you, and the silent partner? I didn't want to elaborate too much, but the two-way is nearly already one way before I came here. Wait, 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 hold on now. So, the 50-50 is about to change to 100% zero? Correct. Okay, all right, so that's new information. Is that gonna happen before I come into the business? Correct. Okay, um, why didn't you tell me that during the pitch? Um, because I didn't want to tell any lies, it isn't signed at the moment, as in our 
papers have to be drawn up and everything. So I wanted to be truthful, which I am being with you. It was kind of at the last minute that you disclosed that, which makes me worried about, you know, just based on our brief interaction, uh, it's, it's not a good sign to me. I 100% accept your bona fides and that you have high integrity and that you will be very successful, but that's just too big a red flag for me. I'm out. Thank you very much, Barry. Thank you very much, Dragons. So at the last minute, Donald's investment slips away and he's not the only one who's disappointed. You look shocked. I just feel sorry for the guy. I think he's an honest guy. He just made a mistake. I think yeah. he's probably just yeah, a little inexperienced, but it's a pity because he's, he's, he seems to be a great operator. Yeah. That's what I saw. He's such a fantastic guy and I'm sure he will be successful. Yeah.